On today's episode of Watch Jerry Go, it's early in the morning. We've got a long drive ahead of us. And of course, we're taking my Volt because it's self-driving. You guys wanted an update on it? Here's your update. What is going on guys? I'm Watch J Argo and today we're here with my 2017 Chevrolet Volt Premier with Comma AI's uh, Comma 3 running Open Pilot on it. It's not just Open Pilot, it's the GM fork of Open Pilot and we'll get into that here in a bit. I think it made it quite a bit worse, although it makes a few things better, but let's get out on the road and let this car drive itself to Dallas for us because we're getting a, a replacement for this. All right, we're out on the road. I'm not driving the Volt. And first we're gonna talk about the Volt and really the update on that. And the update on that is that it's perfect. Like I haven't had to do anything to it. It does exactly what I want every time I get in it. Um, you know, the battery range is excellent, almost 50 miles. Uh, in the winter, of course, it's normal on EVs to see your range cut in half. If you keep it in the garage, you'll get, you know, 75% of the range usually. So I could have just let the car completely come to a stop here when this guy pulled out in front of me but I figured I'd just take over for a second. And as soon as we set the cruise again, the car will be back to driving itself. Uh, but the Volt, incredible fuel mileage, uh, epic value for the money. It's just so nice to drive. I love this car. So on to Kama AI. I'm running, uh, I forgot the Twil Twilsco fork, something like that, which is the GM fork that was pretty much developed for the Volt. And it changes a lot of how the factory, like the base open pilot software actually works. The base open pilot software, you just set cruise and let go. Um, when you're running the Twilsco or Twilonsco or whichever one it is, uh, you have to hit set and then you have to hit resume. And then if you touch the gas, it takes it out of cruise, but not really. It has a kind of a cool feature. It's like a double-edged sword. It's annoying. But if you touch the gas and it takes over, then uh, you can just drive with only the gas pedal and the car steers itself down the road, which is kind of awesome. So if you're in like a situation where you're changing speeds all the time, like I, I actually take it around like big sweepers and stuff like that and just run the gas and let the car sit here and drive. So it's super nice for that. Anyway, we're hopping on the highway. We got a five and a half hour drive ahead of us, something like that. You guys can see the wheel and the road here so you can see how many times I actually have to uh, jump in and mess with it, which is basically just for lane changes. All of that stuff's gonna be fixed soon, I've heard. The experimental builds of Kama that are running in the wild right now let the car automatically stop at red lights and make right turns and things like that without intervention. So obviously it doesn't have any side cameras, rear cameras that, that the vision system can use. So you are the vision system still. It can see down the road and it can take care of all the, you know, the tedious driving. But if you need to change lanes, you mirror check, touch your turn signal, bump the wheel, and the thing does the rest. So you can actually shut off the wheel bump. I'm a big fan of the wheel bump because it makes sure you didn't like accidentally hit the turn signal and the car starts switching lanes without a check. So. I like the wheel bump. This custom fork I have is the one that lets you uh, disable the wheel bump. So I go ahead and use it. It makes sense to me. We're hopping on the turnpike. As you guys know, it's just a long drive down 35 through Oklahoma uh, and it does well in traffic. So Oklahoma City will get managed for me and then on to Texas. So we're basically going to Dallas, Louisville today and it's time for the car to take over. Uh, we've got breakfast to eat. So I'm just gonna sit back here in my recliner and enjoy. taken over here because I just hit a brick I mean I went over the middle of it and there are bricks all over the road this is oh his whole stacks collapsing here all right we're gonna yell at this guy I 
was like, why are there bricks all over the road? And they're the same color as this truck up here. <laughs> but yep, they were sure falling right out of his stack. So he pulled over, he's going to check it out. Shout out to Brandon for doing the, uh, the hand motion, the universal hand motion for your load is falling off your truck. <laughs> so hopefully that saves somebody. Nothing like hitting a brick, at, you know. I mean, if you don't see it, you're in trouble. And they were falling in half, so then they're all jagged and somebody's gonna lose a tire. Anyway, we're about an hour in, so hopefully we make it all the way on one tank of gas. That would be sweet. We gotta kinda hurry, because we can only get the truck if they're open. They close at five and our ETA is like three. So some places are weird. I don't know how it's gonna go down. Uh, I'm assuming that I can just hand them the check at like 4.55, but never assume that. Everyone is super lazy and they'll try to be like, no transactions after three. So we're, we're trying to hurry. Not sketchy at all. I love seeing stuff like this, honestly. Diesel mechanics wife completely broke down. Minivan pulling the whole thing. I've never really shown this thing working in traffic. So here you guys go. We uh, shot until the GoPro died after the brick incident there and eventually ran out of battery, but the car is obviously still driving itself. It's set to, you know, I, I just leave it set at the highway speed and it rolls into town and slows down behind the first vehicle it finds. So you can just kind of follow people through town. It's gonna to slow down for this guy that pulled in front of me a little bit. And that's it. I love this thing. It's so nice to just relax in your car, not worry about a thing. Just make sure nobody comes into your lane. That's really all you have to look for. Like this guy is extremely close. There he's moving over. When I bought Kama for this car, I was pretty upset because it used to cost $1,000. And of course I paid nearly $3,000 for it. But now after driving with it for what, three, four or five months now, I love it. It was worth every dollar. Just like I, I think when FSD works one of these years, uh, when they take it out of beta, it'll be kind of worth the money they charge for that too. Maybe not 15,000, but it's worth 3,000 to just relax on road trips, that's for sure. Um, I would pay it again over and over and over. Uh, hopefully I never have to do it again. The cool thing is they're gonna start charging more and more for this thing as it gets more and more features and gets to where it can completely drive the car and I'll still have only paid $3,000. So it's kind of an investment in the future. It works on tons of cars. So as long as I keep one car around that works with this, it'll be sweet. So we've got two hours left to get to Dallas or something like that. And I'm sure this thing will finish driving the whole way. We're at about a half tank, so we've burnt six gallons so far something like that pretty cheap trip might take a tank and a half might just take a tank the volt obviously super economical too so it's kind of the, a match made in heaven and soon i'll get my car back in the garage so i can charge it again that's that's why i'm going to sell the mclaren so i can put my volt back in the garage here's the real common test for you guys this is probably the most dangerous intersection there is in all of oklahoma uh it's the changeover from 35 to 35 and one of the lanes just gets deleted. Like, out of nowhere, the lane just vanishes after you go through this turn. And the turn's really slow. I mean, you can push it really, really fast, but it wants me to drive, but it's also handling it, so. All right, I'll put a finger on there. You have to alleviate a little bit of the torque off the wheel sometimes, and then it's good to go. All right, here's where it gets crazy. That's the lane that gets deleted over there, but you usually don't realize that it just vanishes. I guess we're good. Doesn't it feel like we're going like three mile an hour right now? Yeah. <laughs> it says we're going 60, but after three hours of going 80, it's pretty painful going 60. At the Oklahoma City gas stop right now and it's always funny when I go to fill this thing up I always want to put premium in it do any of you other gen 1 and then gen 2 volt owners always do that too it just seems like I'm driving my volt it needs premium because the old one did this one 87 no ethanol gas is dirt cheap 267 a gallon so this trip ends up costing maybe $60 there and back, insane. Open Pilot has been driving the Volt for four hours now. And sure, it's been super nice just sitting here and relaxing, but the really nice thing is the sun has finally broke through the fog. 
take a look at that. It's starting to look like a normal day. I wasn't sure it was ever going to happen, but it's getting nice outside right as we get to uh, our destination down here in Louisville. After that, we're headed straight to get some food, and this thing will drive itself back. Are you excited to self-drive the car back home? Yeah, I'm going to sit right here. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the real move. It, uh, it checks to make sure you're in the seat and that your seatbelt's buckled before it engages, but I guess if you just put some weight there, I do not advise this, it's highly illegal, don't do that. It went from real foggy to real bright, real fast. And then we sat here in traffic for a while, the car drove all the way through the traffic, I never had to touch it, and it accelerated, I mean, full stop, all the way back to 84 mile an hour, no intervention, and that was awesome. Now, we just passed the Dollar Tree warehouse, everyone knows where that's at on 35, and we're about to pass the Michelin factory. But I have this man here who is a true Michelin hater. Oh, yeah. yeah, he works for Goodyear, so uh, we're gonna see. I gotta, I gotta keep it separate. I don't want to start any big fights or anything like that. But you never know. Loose cannon out here. Yeah, ruin the tires. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a tire fight where you guys throw tires at each other. Yeah, could be wild. Anyway, what I put a couple thousand miles on this car. I don't know what else anyone expected from the update other than the Volt is perfect. Like I've said before, my last one, 50,000 trouble-free miles other than that one TSB the dealership took care of, and it's electric. So uh, I love this car even more than I love the last one. This one's definitely a lot nicer. And uh, the only thing that's weird is when the engine starts, it creates this racket, right? So the old one would pretty smoothly transition between the engine and the electric motor. Uh, it has that planetary clutch system with like three inputs because you've got the big motor, the little motor, and the engine. This one has the same thing. I think the California emissions are what makes this thing weird, but when it starts, it's a cool, 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 and then it finally engages. Like it's a whole racket and it's clunky and you feel it happen. That's the only thing that I have to complain about about this car. Um, why was the old one smoother? That, if, if the old one wasn't smoother, then I wouldn't care at all. I'd be like, well, that's expected. And the Prius has no problem with it. And hybrid synergy drive is very close to the same setup. You never feel it in a Prius for the most part. You just feel the engine rev up and it just goes to the moon and the car drives. This one, it's a little bit weird, but I have nothing to complain about, honestly, because it doesn't change the drivability. And that's all that matters at the end of the day. Rock solid car, solid price. It's affordable, you can drive it for like $2 a day TCO, which is just crazy. Love the thing. This'll be weird though, I think it's gonna merge to one lane and I'll have to manage that. Wichita to Dallas with, how long do you think I drove for If I when I took over? Maybe five minutes the whole time? Yeah. Just sitting here with my hands on my lap, enjoying the drive. Love it. I don't know what else you guys wanted me to say about the car other than it's been amazing. It's exactly what I expected it to be. And, uh, you know, I, I recommend the Volt to everybody, especially if you're wanting to play with an EV and not jump all the way in. It's perfect. It'll get you anywhere, gasoline. And uh, whenever it's plugged in, it'll save you more money than you could ever imagine. So that's my Volt six months in, actually, I think. I think I've had the car for six months and comma for three months. We're in Texas, so we're here to pick up my next truck, and you guys get to see that in the next video. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop watchjrgo.com for cool shirts. Not like this, and please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do, and I will talk to you next time. The one cool thing the GM fork added to this is whenever you hit the brakes, it automatically holds them. So after like two seconds, it just takes over and gives you auto brake hold, something the car doesn't actually even have an option for.